Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm having some little camera issues, so sorry I'm a minute late. I'm pretty much a maven about being on time. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I did, and I'm going to talk about it in a moment because I am a grandma, and I get and I get grandma, I get grandma luxury here. <laughs> so raise your hand if you're a grandma. <laughs> Right. You guys sent a ton, ton of questions, all right? And I said I would just like pick them out of a box and do whatever, but they were really good. I mean, there's some really good stuff in here and not everything I could answer, which I thought was really interesting. So, so what I figure I'll do is, you know, we go till 1030. I've got my trusty watch on. We'll get through what we can and then we'll just pick it up, all right? The, the questions were really, really, really good. Okie dokie. Again, I am a grandma. <laughs> this weekend, I got totally, totally hooked. Let's see. My, my Lennox, my granddaughter, is in cheer. And it's competition cheer. It's not like rah rah pom poms. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. I did watch the first season of Cheer on Netflix, and apparently it's going to be a Olympic sport at some point down the road here. So we were, hey Barb, we were in uh, San Jose, and they are basically they've got group one to group seven. Seven is like incredible. And the end quest is to go to uh, Orlando for the big competition at the end. And on that cheer series, you can see that there. But anyways, Lennox is in one, all right? And then when you're in group one or group two or group three, they then put you by age. Okay, so here they were doing their thing yesterday. Uh, it made me want to go home and stretch, all right? Barbara, even with all your <laughs> we're all going oh and the great thing is when they take their hand and or their leg and swing it off or they twirl way up high now again these are the babies and it's really funny because they have a team but then within the team they have oh gosh what did a dare call it a little group a little group of four all right and this is the team is, is Cali. It's all over the West Coast. They do really, really well. We'll come to find out. Oh, Sue Rapp, I hope you're here. And anybody else that goes to my retreat. Oh, Debbie Stevens' daughter is in, is in Lennox's little pod. <laughs> and so Debbie and I were there. And then I took, uh, Debbie took this picture and sent it to me. And then I started looking and I had to laugh. The, the, it's obvious who my grandchild is, and it's obvious who Debbie Stevens' grandchild is. On Saturday, Robin, who you, I speak often of Robin, um, who saved my life with my parents, came, and she has fallen in love with Lennox. She calls Lennox her granddaughter because she only has boys in, the, in that thing. So here's, here's Robin trying to steal Lennox. <laughs> And take her away. She's shoving my head away. <laughs> she goes, mine. That's mine. <laughs> so super, super fun. They're going to Palm Springs soon, and I didn't think I'd have any interest. Oh, I got to figure out where I'm going to stay. Fabulous. Also, there's another grandma on our team who's a quilter. So that was super fun. Okay, a lot of questions. This one is non-quilty, but somebody wanted to see my kitchen. And that's kind of like my granddaughter. Sorry, you got to bear with me. <laughs> so here is my old kitchen, all right? There was absolutely nothing wrong with it other than we were invaded by mice. And, when, and I don't think I showed you guys the picture, but when we took out that counter... It was gaggish. It was like, ugh, including the nest, including everything. And the reason we just, if you guys have mice, just don't mess with it, okay? You're looking at, in my old kitchen, a new refrigerator on the left and the dishwasher straight back. Those had to be re 
replaced because the mice had chewed them alive. And I've also heard they'll they'll go and you know get in engines of cars and choose thing and this and that. So this mice thing, my kids would come in and go, oh my God, it smells so bad. It smells so bad. I couldn't smell it. But I said to John, look, if we're going to do it, let's just get on with it. Okay. So the first thing we did, I want that island gone. This is a, it's not going to look small, but where I'm standing is the family room and it's this fairly small space and I wanted to open it up and I wanted it to look like the entire room and I have a lot of dark furniture. So uh, we took the island out and um, we also moved the sink out of the corner. And by removing the sink out of the corner, it gave me a ton of storage as well as the other corner. We took it out too. There are these really cool things you can pull out and then put all your stuff in it. Also, the floors are the original floors that the original owner, Morig, laid by hand. The only thing I would not, it's, it's funky. It's not like what you would get now. I will, those, those floors started the whole thing and I was not about to get rid of them. So I had Tammy help me, my designer, and she she helped me make decisions and it was really interesting and you guys are all artists too here she said you are an artist now let's make a kitchen that's artful and so for my backsplash i ended up going to heath tile in sausalito these were individually placed tiles in the second in the seconds room and you buy these boxes and basically have to throw out a third of them but it was like you know a 16th of the cost and then the countertop is a honed um, quartzite. And I, I, I just, of course, of course it was the one that cost the most. Of course it was. <laughs> but I just love this space. Okay. There. Check off that question. <laughs> All right. So Sue, I think, was the one of the first questions to come in. And... Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Alice, Alice, Alice. Alice sent me um, this, this jacket of hers is made out of silk ties. And when you pause for a moment, you can see the theme is peacock. So here's this. And then up here are the sleeves. I think the sleeves might be my favorite part because you can see those beautiful, beautiful feathers. So Alice, thank you for sending that to me. And then Carol, who won, um, who did the Wool Color My World, was down at Road to California, and there she is with Annie Smith. Now remember, okay, no excuses. She did it in wool, and this, and I've showed it a million times because I guess you could say I'm a little obsessed with this quilt. Um, that was the first quilt she's ever done. But wait, if that's enough, enough, she is doing this year's BOM Pick a Petal and she's never pieced before. <gasps> so, Carol, I can't wait to um, catch up with you in five years and see what you're doing. But again, that's this year's TQS BOM, Pick a Petal, and Carol's jumping in. So, here we go. All right, first question was from Sue. I'll go back to that. And it was, how do you turn corners when you're doing a quilting design using stencils? First of all, I have, I am, I've been for, quilting 40 years, people, 40 years. And in the olden days, we had to draw all of our own stencils and you would draw it out on paper and figure in the measurement and all that good stuff. Well, after taking Cindy Needham's class, it really opened up a lot to me because honestly, I'm I'm a little a little afraid. I'm intimidated by stencils, so I called Robin, the one that's going to steal my granddaughter, and I said, "Well, how do you do it?" And she was like, "Well," and she started talking through, and then she said, "You know what? Tell everybody to go to Cindy. I hope you have a pencil and paper for your people. Go to Cindy Needham's website." And if you're looking here, here's a bunch of different ways you can approach it. There's not a cut and dried way to approach it. But basically, I think, and I'm not an expert like Cindy, so please forgive me, Cindy, if you're watching and I'm wrong. What you do is you establish the corner, 
establish the center and then and then work kind of towards the center. And what you're going to have to do is like, let's just talk about that upper left one. You might have to expand some of those S's for lack of better words or shrink them in a little bit. And then ultimately that's how you do it flawlessly. And I will tell you, one of the first things I look at at any seriously quilted quilt is how did the person turn the corners? Because that is a big, big deal. Okay, there it is. Yes, Cindy Needham just spent, spelled normally, C-I-N-D-Y-N-E-E-D-H-A-M. And, oh, Carol, Carol, <laughs> your computer's down. Ugh, technology. All right, so I hope that helps you a little bit, Sue. That's a that's a big subject matter. One person wrote and said, how are you quilting your heart quilt? Remember we saw it last week and she said, cause I don't know what to do. And I said, I'm still ruminating on it. I mean, I don't know how those people that just pick it up and do it, do it, but they do, right? Okay, Rose, is, uh, oh wait. How do I begin to design a quilt? Where do I get my inspiration? Okay, inspiration comes in from a lot of places. Typically, in the olden days, what I would do is I, in my brain, I would pick a block or an applique pattern or something like that, and then I would go and pick the fabric, and then they would marry together. And then what I would start doing is making blocks, putting them on my design wall, you know how I am about that, and and just start working with it. Now, you know, we've come a long way, baby, in 40 years, and we have a lot of computer programs that are out, that are out there that you can play with. I'm, I'm very, very tactile. But I've been taking a lot of classes lately, and it's funny because I just found this quilt top I'd forgotten I even started working on. And I think this might have been in a Jean Wells' class. So I looked at this and I'm like going, or maybe either, either, either Jean or Rosalie Days, I honestly don't remember. And I blew it up, I cut it out, and this is my inspiration. I am very intrigued by the color placement, the lines that are going across, and I just, I just found this in my unfinished drawer and I want to share it with you. So the timing couldn't be better for that question. So here's what I'm working on. Um, I think this is as far back as I can get. There we go. Some of those whites are stripped in. Some of them are appliqued on top. And right now, I've got to applique down the ones that are on top. And I'm using a very fine, fine 80 weight white thread so that it just doesn't even show. So here's this. And then I'm going to go back to this. I might have that the wrong way. Yeah, blue is on this side. So this is why I encourage people to take classes, step out of their comfort zone, especially with a trained professional teacher because they can help you do your thing. And I, I like, I, hey, Gailene, um, I love your, what you just said, designing on the fly. I want to watch the quilt developed. So Maria, take classes. That's what I'm going to say. Take classes. And um, there's, other cool, there's other questions that feed into this. So let me just check that and that. Okay, what quilt groups do I belong to? That's funny. Of course, I belong to Amateur Valley Quilter. Quilters, it's a very large guild in the Tri-Valley here in California, Pleasanton, Dublin, Livermore. I never go. I'm a lousy member, but I have a secret deal with them and everybody in, within the, the top brass, they know what it is, okay? Um, so I belong to that. That's a big, big guild and we bring in really great teachers. Um, do I still hand quilt? I would like to say yes. But have I had my quilt frame up in a while? No, the last one I did was a silk quilt. I I love hand quilting, but I'm so intrigued with the machine quilting process now. I'm naturally gravitating there. I don't want I don't want to get my feet in the mud and not be able to move on. Do I quilt every day? No. 
No, I don't. Um, I, I think everybody, I saw this the other day, and I went, boy, that's true. Everybody has their time frame where they like to quilt the most, and mine is mid to late afternoon before supper. That's when I like to quilt. In the olden days, I could sit down and quilt for hours and hours and hours. I'm just a little too distracted with my responsibilities, but also I would be lying if I didn't say um, the whole thing with my parents and my cancer really has thrown me for a loop. But about five months ago, I woke up and I'm like, going, I'm feeling creative again. So, so I'm working through that. All right. Um, Um, uh, Zoreen, it's, it's not mine. I, I'm going to have to think about that. All right. Then Rose asked the million dollar question. What is the biggest change in the quilt world? It might be machine quilting, but I don't think so. I think the internet. And I'll tell you why. And the pandemic added to it because people went to their computer to learn but we can connect people from all over the world. And that is huge. In the olden days, when I would travel and teach, you could kind of go region to region to region to region and know what you were getting into. But now with access to the world, it's a whole different thing. And I think we are very, very lucky for it. Uh, in the olden days, I would have said the rotary cutter, okay? But I think it's much more profound than that with what we have access to. That's my opinion, which you might think is kind of weird. All right. Okay, Beth asked, okay, when we quilt our tie quilts, the silk tie quilts, what are the considerations we want to think about? Okay, first question. Does the thread have to be silk? No. Uh, silk or wool batting? No. I use cotton. Um, only quilt in the ditch? No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. I never like that. Unless you're initially tacking it down and then going to town. Um, regular binding or face it? Depends what the piece is. You know, the, anything you can do in cotton, you can do here in silk, all right? Um, I use the batting. I like very flat batting, and that comes from my old-fashioned roots. So I very well might use a cotton poly or a cotton. Another interesting thing is Robin, who's going to steal my granddaughter, had Minky put on the back of one of her silk quilts. And uh, Diane Schweiker quilted it, and we were all kind of like, ooh, is this going to work? Yeah, it's going to work. And so if you're ever questioning something about a specific textile, just do a little sample and see what happens with it. We have so many options. It is crazy. To me, the binding is a very important part of the design. It's not just a ta-da, let's finish the edges. Okay. Um, Laura says that she thinks the biggest change is color in fabric. That's a, that's a secular thing, secular. And, and, and things do change on a, on a regular basis and colors come in style, colors come out of style. Um, well, that's one reason you want to go to your quilt shop too. Oh, here's a good one. Lori wrote and said, what's the difference between cotton fabric and regular cotton? And I'm going, huh. So I called Laura Nouns, who's, who's in my mini group. Oh, I didn't tell you about that. I'm in the big group, but then we have a mini group that meets every other week. There's like 12 of us, and then there's four of us that meet every Sunday. So I do have a support system with people. Okay, quilting fabric, all right? Quilting fabric is 70 to 80 per square. And what that means is the thread count, all right? So that's typically what you're going to get at your local quilt shop, 70 to 80. Lawn is a tighter weave, and it's about 150 per square inch. And then you go to the teak, which is about 200 per square. And then what's interesting is the super fine Liberty, Liberty fabric that's so luscious and so lightweight and all that, 
is 240, but they're super, super fine threads. So for instance, if you are working with the batik, you're not gonna hand quilt it. You're just not, you're gonna machine quilt it. The, the, the main thing is, is that there are differences, but the standard is our uh, 70 to 80. And even think about sheets. Sheets, you can get up to 1,000. I don't like those sheets. I probably like about 500. It's just all a matter of the feel and, and what you like. And okay, then the same, this question that goes in, okay, then what about big box versus quilt cotton, quilt shop cotton? All right, I am not an expert at this. This is my take on the whole situation. If, when I designed fabric, my stuff was being made in Japan. And there were many, 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 many different colors in, et cetera, et cetera. I find for the most part, when I go to a big box, the prints are simpler. They're, they're easier to achieve. Also, once you start quilting for any length of time, you can feel the difference. You, you, there's just a different feel to it. Okay, here's a weird little story. There was a fabric I was looking for. It was a white with black. And I found it, I'm not gonna say where, but at a quilt shop, and I'm not gonna say what manufacturer, it felt crappy. It felt cheap and it felt crappy. I bought it because I had to have that fabric. I, I, I had to have it. With what I know now, I probably would have backed it with fabric prep, Quilter Select fabric prep, and then, and then gone ahead and do it. But you, you trust your fingers. I mean, in the olden days, we had flat folds, and that was typically just really cheap fabric. But it's better than nothing, you know what I mean? So that, you're just gonna have to become a connoisseur of what is what. But the bottom line of all of it is that without our quilt shops, we are in trouble. They were, they are and were my number one teachers. So, so I really truly shop, if you can, a small, a smaller venue and, and then the other reason they can, uh, let's say the big box, I gotta be careful I don't say names, can get a cheaper price, I think, is because they have more buying power, right? So they can go in and say blue, 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 and the manufacturer will jump through hoops. This is all my opinion. All right, Dorothea, confused about weight, thread weight, all right. Uh, and where is it on the spool? Let me see if I can find this other camera here. So here is uh, Orofil, and it has it is a 50 weight. Oh shoot! Let me see if I can. Huh, let me see if I can get this in here. There we go. Oh, not really. Let me get this down here. Anyways, you. It, I'll just point to it. It has 50 weight which is right there, right there, and it's two ply. Typically, that's what we all went to, is a 50 weight. Then, um, let's see, this is Masterpiece. Oh, it, it also tells you how much thread is on it too. This one has, where does it have? I don't know. I, maybe I just lied, maybe my pants are on fire. Okay, this is Superior. This is a 50 weight and it's a two ply. Now, interesting, um, I used to be with Superior and my Bernina ate up this two ply. So they went to a 50 weight three ply and it worked better. If your machine is eating up your fabric or your uh, thread, lower the tension. All right, on top. Let's see, this is Quilter Select. This is 60 weight. Basically, it's on the end, you guys. And then this is 80 weight on here. I hate that I can't get it in clear, but it, just look at the end. Now, thread has come a long, long, long way. In the olden days, we were, what's the matter, John? Okay, 50 is thicker than 60. 60 is thinner. 
And now like my master, my masterpiece, my quilter select 80 weight is that much thinner than a 50 weight. And then I've got a 60 weight, which is thinner. So what's, why is that great? It's great because it makes your piecing more accurate. All right. You don't have to roll over the thread and, and lose, lose size from rolling over the thread. If it's a thicker thread, you're going to lose the size a little bit of your pieced thing. I mean, you, it's just easier to get accuracy. In the olden days, when you went to Big Box, House of Fabrics, I don't even think they're around anymore, there'd be a bin of polyester for like 29 cents. No, you don't do that. But nowadays, and I kind of, I kind of applaud Superior for leading the pack, it's okay to mix a polyester with a cotton and because they're much, much finer and much, much nicer. So in the end, I have an 80 weight on my bobbin and I have a 60 weight on top. And of course it's with um, Quilter Select because that's who I work with. Okay. Receiving finger when hand quilting. <laughs> that's from Kirk. I know exactly what you're talking about. When you're hand quilting, you have a finger underneath that you're pushing up the fabric, making a hump that you can rock through. There's There are some little tools you can put on. I can't think of it. It's called Aunt Becky's or whatever. I really need to feel the needle. I need to feel the prick on my finger so that I can roll and go back up. Oh, this is what I use, all right? Even for, hand, even for hand work. This is new skin. It's a liquid bandage. It comes in also a spray container, but I like this. You probably can get it online. It's basically from the pharmacy. If I were to describe it, I would say it's like rubber cement, all right? Don't put it on a kid's scratch. They'll shoot through the roof. It's got all the stuff in it that stings. And then at night, there's a product called Bag Balm that many quilt shops sell. Also in Livermore, we have a feed store and you can get a big thing and then, you know, put it in little tins and parcel it out to your group for a, a Christmas present, Mother's Day or whatever. At night, I would put the Bag Balm on, okay? And during the day, when I feel that hole, I putty it up with this. It takes about two minutes to dry and it works. New skin. Um, okay, let's see. Next, okay. I like that. The receiving finger. The other receiving finger when you're hand quilting is your thumb. If you're coming, if you're, say, quilting with your middle finger and you're, and I use my pointer, um, there's a lot, I have classes on this at on thequiltshow.com. If I'm quilting, and my thumb is pushing down in front, that can be the receiving finger too. <laughs> and if you don't know what Kirk and I are talking about, man, you haven't lived. <laughs> oh, this is a good question. Let me grab this ruler. <clears throat> when lining up your fabric with your ruler and rotary cutter, where do you line up? So let me see if I can get this over here to this camera. She said, do you line up, do you line up, um, uh, let me grab a paper. Do you line up on the center of the line? Do you line up on one side of the line, etc." This is one of the reasons I love Quilter Select. You line up exactly on the line, not one side or the other, exactly on. And it was very important to me that these lines were super fine. And even the one inch lines are very, very fine. There was one, um, there was one brand that we all used. And then when they reconfigured their rulers, they made this a little bit fatter. And I don't know why they did that. I have no idea. But the finer the line, the better. Okay. Is Joyce? Oh, okay. I'm going to take two more and then we're going to do this a little bit. We're, we're going to move on with it because he's, I mean, we're going to end for today and we'll do more. Okay. Okay. Karen's asking on the Bernina with the, with the dual feed, 
um, if you if you don't engage, okay, uh, 37D, uh, PC and foot, 37D dual feed. If you don't engage the dual feed, we talked about the machine about a week and a half ago, it, what's going to happen is you're going to forget all about it. You're going to be sewing along and you're going to be going, why is this going wee-wah on me? Um, what is going on? If you engage the dual feed, it will behave properly. It's one of those things it's easy to forget to do, but I will say when if, if it's going wee-wah on, on your machine, like yee, engage it. Okay, and here comes John. Okay, the wool kit. What is the update? What about that? Oh, did somebody ask that? Okay, so uh, I want to do one more question that goes, and it goes to the end. Oh, God, these questions are so good. Brenda wanted me to show, I got to do two more. When you're pinning, no, I'm going to do that one later, Linda, because I, I, I asked you a question and I want to see your answer before I share with it. One last thing is somebody, well, not last, because we've got all these great, great questions, is if you own the Quilter Select Rotary Cutter, how do you open it? It is very different. A slow-mo is what you want. Okay, let's look at the cutter. Here is the safety feature. Here's the blade. And so what you do is let's ignore this side, please. Just ignore it, all right, for now. To open it, you press down and pressing down. And while you're pressed down, just tap. To close it, I'll do it again. You roll it over and go like that. It's wonderful because you can't open it without pressing this. Press down, go like this, cut, 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 cut. And you don't have to hold this while you're cutting. Just engage it, get it open. And then go like that. So what is this stuff on the back for? If you say, let's say, are cutting, like batting or something, you can really open up this blade by pressing down on this. That always has to be engaged. Roll it over and then pull this, that lever. I pulled it. I would never, ever, ever use that unless I were doing something like batting. To close it, you roll it over. And I'm going to have to, I believe, use this, ah, this thing, the safety button to close it. This is a more complex way to open it. And um, I, I never do it, guys. I just never do it. Now, also, the back, what's this for? All right. That, it's a super easy blade to change. I'm going to pull this down. Okay. I've opened this up. And then this thing here is a magnet. So I take off the blade, put a new one on, and then you'll see here that this is a little bit flat right there. And on this, there's a little bit flat there. I put it together on the correct side. <laughs> Put it on there, okay. Roll it over. Whoops. I'm not used to the slow slow mo stuff. Put it down. Flat to flat. Okay. Get in there. Okay. Hold it. Snap shut, and there you go. Press in. Go down, and there you go. All right. So John wants to know about the wool kit, and I think some of you did too. Uh, and again, I have a lot more questions, you guys. The wool kit. We've ordered the wool, we've ordered the thread, and we, when we get there, we get there, all right? I am, as, I am as anxious as you. 
Everybody thinks that we're this big, you know, big complex thing. No, we're just a bunch of little people running as very fast as we can. Very, very fast. Okay. Okay, this is great. Okay, good, good, good. So what is happening Wednesday? I'm not going to continue questions on Wednesday. I'm not going to lose these questions. They are too stinking valuable. On Wednesday, okay, Carol Breyer Fallert, we all, we are all very, very familiar with her. She's been around for quite a long time. Get back here. As a lovely quilter, she, her work, her stuff, her stuff wins ribbons. And it was funny. She was the first person to get a best of show at Paducah and she machine quilted her quilt. And that was a scandal. Okay. And so she's doing something very, this is what her work, uh, this is very reminiscent of her work. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. She is doing something very, very, very different now. And, oh gosh, John saw their Christmas letter and it showed the quilt on it. And it revolves around a trip that they went to in Tasmania and an interactive place that, like, a, not a museum, that's not the right word, interactive art experience. And the quilt she made was jaw dropping. And so on Wednesday, she put together an absolutely beautiful presentation on how she did this. So that's what we're going to do on Wednesday. And then my guess is we'll get back to this on Monday. Okay. Yeah, careful. No kidding. All right. Um, I think we're good. I will. Carol, you've been doing it wrong. Ooh, don't, don't learn this thing. And once you learn it, it's super heavy. It's super heavy, which I love. <clears throat> All right. I will see you guys Wednesday. Um, I know the Carol Breyer Fowler thing is going to blow your brains. It's about messing with your vine. And, and that's all I'm going to say. And in putting it together, I got a little, that's all I'm going to say. And then, and then Jerry, I showed him because he's an engineer and going to cheer him up yesterday. I said, look at this quilt. Look at this quilt. You're going to just groove on it. He's an engineer. And his answer was, isn't that cheating? And John goes, nope, none of it's cheating. And I have to laugh because that question, which is what was asked about Carol when she took the first award with machine quilting. Well, isn't that cheating? No, it's not. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, you guys. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me, and I'll see you Wednesday. You do not want to miss this. Tell your friends about it.